it's a tragic sight to see a wild animal dead at the side of the road. And wildlife vehicle collisions have only been increasing over the years. Each year there seems to be more cars on the road. And over the decades, speed limits have been increasing. This means that it's harder than ever for animals to avoid vehicles. And wildlife vehicle collisions have been a topic of academic research to understand the causes and how it can be mitigated. Roads carve up both urban and wild areas, and this often means that they go through wild animal habitats. In some cases, roads can also attract animals, as some wild animals use them as salt licks. In the colder months of the year when salt is spread on roads, it can accumulate at the side of the road, and many animals will take advantage of this. These animals are at great risk of becoming roadkill, and it's also dangerous for the drivers too. Unfortunately, all types of animals are hit by cars, but we seem to show more compassion towards some animals than others. It seems as though people are more happy to run over reptiles, as a study in 2007 found that 2.7% of drivers intentionally hit reptile decoys. Several drivers were seen to speed up and aim for the decoys, and male drivers hit reptile decoys more often than female drivers. Before you lose your faith in humanity, it's not all bad, as 3.4% of male drivers and 3% of female drivers stop to rescue the reptile decoys. All types of animals are hit by cars on the roads, and it doesn't matter if they're wild or domesticated, or endangered or abundant. Roadkill is estimated to be responsible for around 50% of Florida panther deaths, and it's the largest cause of badger deaths in England. It threatens Australian creatures such as koalas, wombats and quolls. And in South America, the Andean mountain cat is sometimes a victim. In some cases, roadkill can lead to more roadkill, as scavengers will come to feed on the animals, and then they can turn into roadkill themselves. There are a few ways in which you can try and prevent wildlife vehicle collisions, and one of the best ways is cutting your speed. As well as driving to the speed limit, you should also drive to the conditions, as it's not always safe to drive at the speed limit. Different conditions can hamper your vision, and you can't always see for long distances ahead of you. In these conditions, you should drive slowly, as it's more than likely that you will be taken by surprise. Wildlife crossings are a great way to help wild animals, and we really do need more of them. It allows animals to travel underneath or over roads, and it means that they can cross them safely. Canopy crossings are also very important to our boreal species, and this is especially the case for animals that are very vulnerable on the ground. Unfortunately, these prevention measures are usually very expensive, and that's why there's not as many of them as there should be. These prevention measures are not only for the wildlife, but they're also for the people, as each year in the US, hundreds of people lose their lives to wildlife vehicle collisions. It's a similar story across the rest of the world, but some animals are hit by cars more often than others. In this next section of the video, I will be going through some of the worst offenders, and we'll start off with the squirrels. There are around 285 species of squirrel alive today, and these animals can be found all over the world. These animals are split into five subfamilies, and they each have a slightly different way of life. These animals are among the most abundant rodents on this planet, so it's no surprise that they're involved in a lot of wildlife vehicle collisions. As a large number of squirrels are arboreal, they are slightly more clumsy on the ground. This means that they're often not the best at avoiding cars, and it seems as though they treat oncoming cars in the same way that they would treat predators. When squirrels come across some predators such as foxes, they will freeze and stay still until the very last moment. This is because squirrels are usually very agile creatures, and they're able to change direction quicker than the predators. Of course, this strategy doesn't really work against cars, and this is why an estimated 41 million squirrels are killed by drivers each year. Most squirrels would definitely benefit from canopy crossings, and a few of them have been constructed in Britain for red squirrels. Unfortunately, these canopy crossings are still quite rare, but hopefully in the future this will change. The next group of animals we will be taking a look at are the kangaroos and wallabies. Kangaroos are indigenous to Australia and New Guinea, and there are an estimated 35 to 45 million kangaroos in Australia. These animals can often be seen bounding across the landscape, but unfortunately they're not the best at avoiding cars. In Australia, kangaroos are the most common species hit and killed by vehicles, and they can cause significant damage and even fatalities. Other large species such as wombats are also hit, but nowhere near as often as kangaroos. 
Kangaroos and wallabies account for a staggering 90% of animal-related crashes in Australia, and there are a few reasons behind this. Kangaroos are usually found in rural areas, and this usually means that vehicles are driving at a higher speed, and on dimly lit or dark roads. Kangaroos can also move at great speeds, and unfortunately these factors are usually a recipe for disaster. One of the best ways to stop these collisions is by driving slower at dusk or dawn, and hopefully in the future there won't be as many kangaroo collisions. The next animal we will be taking a look at is the common pheasant. The common pheasant is native to Asia, but it's been introduced into many countries around the world. It can be found over large parts of North America, Europe, Australia and New Zealand, and in these areas it's very good at getting hit by cars. Birds are one of the most common animals involved in wildlife vehicle collisions, and the common pheasant is one of the most common birds hit. One of the main reasons behind this is their tiny brain size, and the way that they react to predators. If you've ever been walking in an area with lots of pheasants, you'll notice that they fly away at the last minute. They'll wait until you're almost a few meters away from them, and then they'll fly away as fast as they can. This strategy doesn't really work for cars, and really they're not the brightest birds. I was once driving a tractor when there was a pheasant in my way, and instead of moving out of the way of the tractor, it ran the whole length of the field in front of it. This just goes to show how dumb yet endearing they are, and their tiny brains are one of the main reasons why they get hit so often. The final group of animals we will be taking a look at are the deer. Deer are among the largest and most dangerous animals involved in wildlife vehicle collisions, and each year many of them lose their lives to cars, and they also take the lives of many drivers. Famously, some deer species freeze in the headlights, and this is one of the reasons why so many of them are hit. The number of accidents, injuries, and fatalities varies from year to year, but each year in the United States, deer vehicle collisions resulted in at least 59,000 human injuries and 440 human fatalities. In the US, an estimated 1.25 million insurance claims are filed annually due to collisions with deer, and this means that one out of every 169 collision damage claims involves a deer. In other countries, it's a similar story, but not on the same level. As in the year 2000, Canada had 23 fatal collisions, and in Germany there were 20. Once again, one of the best ways to avoid deer is to slow down, and don't ignore deer signs. Hopefully in the future we can come up with more solutions, as the number of endangered animals killed by cars is not sustainable. There are plenty of other animals that could have made it into this video, so if you think you know of any, then let me know down in the comments below. But for now, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.